The HDF5 library has a feature called chunk caching, which is turned off by default and has to be enabled. What its purpose is, is to smooth out the process of I.O. so that when you are trying to read or write from chunks, you have this extra memory layer that you are allowed to leverage that smooths out many of the operations. So to understand this, you have to think about how this all works with respect to code you write versus disk I.O. versus what, what might be um, facilitated with something like a chunk cache. So obviously this really only works with data sets that are chunked. But let's think through it a little bit. Imagine you have this data set with all the chunks. And you have some program over here. This can be Python, it can be C, it can be whatever. And this program is going to call out various chunks to read. And it's going to read out, um, it's going to read out, you know, this one, it's going to read out this one, and it's going to read out this one. And it's going to, you know, process them in various ways. But what happens if it needs to come back to, say, one that it recently read? wants to read it again or it, it read that chunk let's say it read this third chunk uh, we'll, we'll go back over here and blow this one up a bit let's say it read this chunk but it only read say half of it right and then stopped and then did some more work and then wanted to come back and read the rest of that chunk well what would it do if it's not managing its own buffers internally, then it's got to go all the way back and read yet again from, from the disk, which, you know, is horribly inefficient. This is sitting on disk. So instead, what it could exist and what can be implemented is the concept of a chunk cache. And the chunk cache is an HDF5 managed cache, memory cache, that lives with HDF5 and simplifies the way in which reads and writes can occur. The chunk cache defines a set of memory where individual chunks can be copied into when read or when written to. And these stay in memory. This is in RAM, right? This is on disk. So reading from RAM is extremely fast, well, whereas reading and trying to pull from disk is much, much, much slower. And so let's say that this particular piece was in the cache. Then if the program wants to read the rest of this data, it just reads it from the, from the cache and RAM, and everything is happening super quickly. Similarly, let's say you're trying to write, right? and you want to write to you know this chunk over here. The program is now going to write. You know, let's say it's going to write to this one. Well, if it only partially wrote to the chunk and then wants to write again later, what's it going to have to do? The write operation is going to have to read the entire chunk as it as uh, even though only part of it was written edit whatever extra pieces it wants, and then write the entire thing over again. And so, you know, if you're doing non-chunk bounded writing, this can get very, very slow, very, very painful. Whereas imagine instead you had a chunk cache, and if you write a little bit, it just stays in the cache. It doesn't actually flush it to disk yet. And it will wait until all of it's written, or it will just keep it open in, in case you're going to you know, write more later. And only when you either ask it to flush it to cache, or flush it to disk, or you close the, the H5 file, will it actually put these all into disk and write those chunks. This can be a very efficient way to speed up your use of HDF5 without having to really manage the concept of a cache because HDF5 does it all sort of for you. 
Now there's parameters to choose, right? It, how big is this cache going to be? How many chunks can it hold? What's the policy for, most importantly, what's the policy for when it gets, or that's not most importantly, but also important is what's the policy for when the chunk cache gets full. If your chunk cache gets full of chunks, and you want to write more, right? you want to read one more chunk, one of these chunks in the cache has to get evacuated. It's got to be evicted from cache so that you can fit the next one. Which one are you going to do? There's decisions to make there. So all of these things play into uh, various parameters that can be set about the policies on which the way HDF5 manages its chunks, its chunk cache. So understanding this, leveraging the chunk cache when appropriate, and and knowing how to properly parameterize it can significantly speed up the throughput of the application that you're working with. On the other hand, turning off or leaving off the chunk cache when it should be used or improperly tuning the chunk cache uh, relative to the type of operations being performed can provide minimal and sometimes even be standing in the way of performance. And so these are things you just want to be, be mindful of and aware of. But this is a relatively sophisticated feature of HDF5 is that it provides a chunk cache which is, which is something that, that would otherwise have to be programmed entirely at the program level, which is not usually a particularly fun exercise. And taking advantage of chunk cache frameworks like, like what is provided in HDF5 is yet another reason why it's a, it's a very popular and, and powerful uh, file format for data analysis and working with large data sets.